Are airplanes secretly spraying toxic chemicals into the sky? Hi, welcome to Bullshit Busted. Throughout history, people have been afraid of things they don't understand, like comic books, bicycles, weed, vaginas, the list goes on and on. Thankfully, over time as new information comes out, these unfounded fears often fade into oblivion. But ever since the mid-90s, there's been a conspiracy theory that just won't seem to go away. Everything that you see in the sky is pollution from fucking airplanes! Have you ever looked up in the sky? Have you ever looked up in the sky? Have you ever looked up in the sky? Up in the sky? Please go home today and Google chemtrails. This is gas. How is it forming in a straight line? We're being sprayed every day in this city with chemicals. Chemicals sprayed over our heads, right over our fucking heads. The chemtrail conspiracy theory is the belief that the evil powers that be are using jet aircraft to spray toxic chemicals into the sky, which will then fall back to Earth. Why are they doing this? Well, the conspiracy theorists usually claim it's for mind control, weather control, population control, or some variation of those three. Chemtrails have actually gained quite a bit of attention, appearing on the news and people protesting them all around the world. They've even been mentioned by Kylie Jenner. Regardless, in reality, these trails behind planes are nothing more than condensation trails, or contrails for short. They form when hot, humid jet exhaust mixes with the very cold air, turning into ice crystals. In this video, I'll be going over and debunking five common chemtrail arguments, and I'll provide all of my sources in the description. Claim number one, contrails and chemtrails are different. For whatever reason, conspiracy theorists believe that contrails can only be short and vanish quickly. In their mind, if the trail stays in the air, it's a chemtrail. If you look in the science, contrail, real contrails, it's supposed to be water vapor that dissipates within 60 seconds. They don't uh, spread across the sky. Nope. The science shows that these are both contrails. What makes them long or short is the atmosphere. One of the main factors for how long a contrail will last would be humidity. If the air happens to be dry, the plane will either have a short trail or no trail at all. If the air is moist, the trail will be persistent. And if the air is very moist, the trail may begin to spread, eventually resembling a cirrus cloud. Now, you might ask why sometimes there will be two planes flying with a different trail length. Well, it's important to remember that planes fly at very high altitudes, and it can be hard to tell how high one plane is compared to another. So when you see two planes in the sky and one has a longer trail, that just means that one altitude is moister than the other. So tell me, what is more reliable here? The unfounded opinions of paranoid people on the internet, or books and papers written by scientists who are experts in this field? Claim number two, the trails never used to look this way. According to conspiracy theorists, back in their day, contrails were always short-living. It wasn't until about the 90s that they began lasting a long time. Therefore, chemtrails. Look at the skies. What's the difference? We never used to see these in the skies. What's the difference? It's chemtrails. It's real. It's not a theory. Thankfully, their poor memory does not dictate reality. There are science books and papers going back decades that provide descriptions and photos of persistent contrails. They've been around before most of these conspiracy theorists were even born. And if that isn't enough, there's also footage of persistent contrails from during the 1940s. Vapor trails of fighting aircraft jolt us into a realization of the sterner things that mar the beauty of a landscape at peace. So, why do conspiracy theorists not remember seeing them when they were children? Well, probably because there wasn't that much air traffic back then. But as traffic has grown and more routes have been created, the odds of seeing a persistent contrail have greatly increased. Or maybe when they were kids, they just didn't look up. Claim number three, the spray can be seen turned on and off. Every now and again, you may see a plane with gaps in their contrail. The conspiracy theorists interpret this as the supposed spray being turned on and off or malfunctioning somehow. Oh, off, do you see that? Look at that, bam, off. There it goes, back on, you got that? We just caught him literally in the act, look it. But, yet again, their interpretation is wrong. These broken contrails are caused by a plane flying through a dry patch or layer in the sky. Remember, contrails will not persist in dry air. So if you see a contrail stop out of nowhere, it simply means the airplane flew through an area of low humidity. And again, this is nothing new. It can be seen happening in World War II footage. 
But as we've seen time and time again, people will do anything to preserve their bullshit. Which brings us to claim number four. There are pictures of the chemtrail plane interior. Go on YouTube and you'll find plenty of videos claiming to show the inside of a chemtrail plane. The argument being that these tanks are used to hold the chemical. Do they have any evidence of this? No, of course not. So what are they really? They're called ballast tanks and they're used when testing the aircraft. The only thing they're filled with is water, or a water-based solution. Their purpose is to simulate the weight of cargo or passengers, and they usually have tubes connecting them. That way they can pump water between tanks and modify the center of gravity. These are our water ballast tanks, and this is the way we control the center of gravity on the aircraft. You know, for a group that tells people to do their research, they really don't practice what they preach, do they? Another tank they're freaked out by are the ones shown in this picture, with the patent number 7413145. However, if you actually read the patent, this invention was made primarily for fighting fires. This picture comes from the inside of a 747 super tanker, a plane used for, guess what, firefighting. In just 15 seconds, the super tanker can lay a swath of fire retardant three kilometers long. The new global super tanker has a pressurized drop system that is the safest and most effective of all the current firefighting aircraft. The chemtrail conspiracy theorists are a prime example of confirmation bias. They see pictures of tanks in an airplane, but rather than look into what they're actually used for, they immediately assume it's proof of their conspiracy theory. But we still have to cover claim number five. There's video of the chemtrail nozzle spraying. Over the years, conspiracy theorists have posted several videos of a passenger's view on the plane. These videos show a nozzle protruding from the wing and spraying something into the sky. Oh shit, they got me now. How do I debunk this one? Oh yeah, by doing research. What the planes in these videos are doing is called fuel dumping, and it's done to lower the weight of the aircraft. Normally planes will burn off this fuel while flying, but if they need to make an emergency landing, they have to lose the fuel quickly. Otherwise, the excess weight while landing will harm the airframe. There's a bit of a contradiction to this whole conspiracy theory. On one hand, they say the chemtrail planes are full of rows and rows of tanks, yet at the same time they have enough room for a bunch of passengers? It does not add up. The chemtrail conspiracy theorists are one of the most gullible groups I've ever seen, and because of this, fooling with them is very easy. Take for example Chris Bovey, he's the guy behind this video I showed you earlier. After his video went viral on Facebook, he made a follow-up post telling everyone he'd been detained, and also had his phone taken away. This ended up landing him on a conspiracy radio show, where he admitted the entire thing was a joke. I was talking to my friend Stuart Wyatt and just like laughing about it. You know, I couldn't believe it. And he persuaded me to put up another Facebook status saying um, that I'd been detained by the security services in uh, Heathrow Airport and uh, for eight hours and that they confiscated my iPhone. And I said, no, nobody would be stupid enough to believe that. And he said, well, they were stupid enough to believe that your video was a chemtrail. Wah wah. So conspiracy theorists, if you have any more chemtrail arguments for me to debunk, please share them. But until then, your bullshit has been busted. <laughs>